We'll start tonight with a by-election bonanza. Four new MPs are about to be elected to Parliament with four by-elections taking place in two urban and two rural ridings in Quebec, Ontario and Manitoba. In the mix, two former Liberal cabinet ministers' seats are up for grabs. The Montreal riding of Notre Dame de Grace Westmount, vacated by Marc Garneau this year, Notably, former Liberal President Anna Ganey is looking to hold that seat for the party. And in Winnipeg South Centre, which was previously held by the late Jim Carr, his son Ben Carr is running for the Liberals there. Polls are also open and former interim Conservative leader Candace Bergen's Manitoba riding. Portage Lisger, it's a Conservative stronghold, but the People's Party did place second there in the last election. And leader Maxime Bernier has helicoptered in to try and clinch the seat himself. And there's another Conservative incumbent seat up for grabs in Oxford, Ontario, in the southern part of the province. It's turned into a fierce battle with the outgoing Tory MP Dave McKenzie endorsing the Liberal candidate. Yep, you heard that right. Here to break down the data and lay out the stakes are Angus Reid Institute President Shachi Curl and Leger Executive Vice President Andrew Ernst. Hi to both of you. Great to see you. Thank you for making the time. Shachi, uh, I'll start with you. Lots of times by-elections come and go, but there are a couple of reasons to be watching the results tonight. For you, what's the, what's the primary thing you're watching? It's always about momentum and morale, often more than it is about actual portention of what might happen in a next general election. This is not 1978, where there were 13 by-elections and six of them broke from the Liberals for the Conservatives under Joe Clark setting up that win back in 79. It's that this is not that. Tonight is not that. So you've got four seats. Um, I think Portage will be very interesting in Manitoba, just in terms of this may well be Maxime Bernier's last stand. Now, we say that, but then he's Maxime Bernier, so will he ever have a last stand? But it starts to get into what I would call Elizabeth May territory. She had run and, and, and lost so many times before finally uh, settling in Sydney on Vancouver Island back in 2011. But I think if that had not happened for her, we would have been looking at a very different uh, decade that came after it. So again, this is this is what happens with Max and the PPC. I, you can tell why Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives want that one very, very badly. And they're going to want Oxford very, very badly. Uh, Polyev put his stamp on the party a year ago with that commanding victory over Jean Charest. But these are sort of the last skirmishes, uh, as you see, between uh, Mackenzie, the outgoing MP, uh, endorsing the Liberal candidate. These skirmishes can sometimes linger after a major battle is won. And so again, let's see what happens with that. And if the Liberals grab that one, that will be a huge morale boost and a huge, I think, uh, wake up and shudder moment maybe for the Conservatives who, in terms of broad polling numbers, have been picking up momentum. Yeah, I wanted to ask Andrew, just in particular where the Conservatives are concerned, because these are some of the first results we kind of get to gauge uh, as far as Pierre Polyev's leadership. And in particular, let's start with Portage uh, Lisger, in which, and as Shachi laid out, the primary competition for the Conservatives could come from the PPC, and specifically Maxime Bernier. How important is it to the future electoral endeavors of the, of the Tories to be able to get a conclusive result uh, against the PPC tonight? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of uh, with Sachi in terms of their initial comments on these. I mean, these are four, four by-elections, two fairly safe Liberal seats, two, quite frankly, pretty safe Conservative seats, and I, I wouldn't expect a whole lot of surprise. I think the, the Conservatives are going to win in Portage Lisgar. The question becomes, and I think as as, as Sachi noted, like what 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 happens to Maxime? This isn't a good riding to parachute into um, by any stretch. I mean, it's a it's a it's a rural riding. Um, people are like people from from their neck of the woods. Even if Winnipeggers try to, you know, a few Winnipeg uh, residents tried to seek that nomination for the Conservatives, and they didn't fare well, even though they were fairly high profile. So I think, uh, you know, I, I think the Conservatives, the Conservatives will win that. I think potentially there is a chance that that popular percent of popular vote might be, might look a little closer, uh, you know, in, in terms of the 20 percent that the PPC got in the, in the last general election. They may actually get slightly higher if they have a really good night. But I think that's going to sort of mask the fact that voter turnout's not going to be very high. And as a raw count, their vote may not be that, uh, that substantial. And, 
you know, look, would, would Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives like to actually sort of really put a stake into the PPC and, and, and Mr. Bernier tonight in, in Portage Luis Gar? For sure. I mean, it would take a take an irritant, but our national polling at Leger has been been polling the PPC at uh, you know far below their election result in 2021, and I think that's uh, don't really see that changing even uh, even with a slightly better result here in Portage Lisgar. I think the the Oxford seat is uh, is is quite interesting. I mean, uh, you know, again, there was some nomination drama around that that potentially makes that could make that a closer race, although. I can't see a lot of traditional conservative uh, voters in Oxford voting for Justin Trudeau's Liberals. They they may stay home because they're a little they're annoyed, and that could make things closer. But uh, we'll have to see, I guess, after tonight. Uh, can we talk about those? Both of you had touched on sort of what the national polling looks like, just to give uh, our viewers and Canadians watching tonight a, a bigger sense of of where things are at. I know. Overall, uh, Shachi, the Conservatives have been uh, doing well under Pierre Polyev, but there are some vulnerabilities for them as well. Uh, talk a bit about that, if you could, and then also the vulnerabilities for the Liberals at the moment. For sure. So they, they are, the Conservatives are picking up momentum. We're seeing it, uh, and, and other polls are seeing it with, with different number points attached to it. But, you know, a 5 to 7, 8 percent lead in terms of general popular support. But, of course, it, it all comes down to where is the party more popular than the, the Liberals and where is it less? And that popular support really doesn't mean a whole lot unless they're able to replicate it in swing ridings where it matters. So in and around Metro Vancouver, in the Surreys in British Columbia, in the Bramptons in uh, in uh, in Ontario, <laughs> in the GTA, uh, and in other parts of Quebec, in those swing ridings, if they don't. If they're not able to compete in those places, and notably, I think we're starting to see some three-way ties and some really tight competitive races across the country, that is what gives the Liberals <coughs> moment for pause. It's not the broader number. Uh, so in terms of the vulnerabilities or the weaknesses for the Conservatives, it is that. They can't just have this blanket overall number that's commanding but fail to deliver in the swing ridings where it matters. They also have to contend with ongoing issues. Uh, around women, female voters, really not warming up to Pierre Polyev. They do not like the guy. Uh, he's, he's focusing more on cost of living issues. That may move the needle somewhat, but uh, he's, he's not really first on their Christmas card list. Who even sends Christmas cards anymore? For the Liberals, <laughs> what we're seeing is really interesting because uh, for the first time, the cost of living issue is one that is representing a deterioration for a significant and key part of their own support base. So when you look at vote retention and you look at lower income liberal voters, people who voted liberal in 2021 who are struggling with inflation, who are struggling with cost of living, their support is now either breaking for the NDP or notably for the Conservatives. And that is a flank the Liberals absolutely have to watch and keep on top of if they want to keep their base together. Andrew, I've just got uh, less than a minute left, but last word to you. Are there certain parts of the... We, Shachi was alluding to vote efficiency and the, the problems with that for both parties at the moment. Are there certain parts of the country that you're really kind of drilling down on paying close attention to at this moment as far as that goes? Well, I think uh, I think Saatchi touched on them with the GTA and, and the uh, lower mainland. I think, quite frankly, uh, you know, the Conservatives would do well to take a look at even just generally some of the the urban suburban voters that they need to broaden their reach. I mean, I think if you look at that uh, that election in Alberta and, and, and the results in uh, in Calgary, I think Conservatives will want to uh, will want to get in there and, and make sure that they still have some good good uh, credibility with suburban urban voters in in that large market. Um, I think the one thing that wasn't touched on uh, at this stage of the game is is the you know the popularity of both these leaders. Both of them have have some challenges, as as Sachi mentioned. Uh, Pierre Polyev is still has a lot of work to do in terms of introducing himself to Canadians and in particular uh, particular subgroups uh, of, of voters. But I'd also say that uh, the prime minister has some significant challenges. People are are starting to tire. They're tiring a bit of, of the Liberal government and certainly a little bit of his leadership. And I think that, that presents a, a, an interesting conundrum when you're, when you're a swing voter in terms of, you know, 
where do you go? Uh, there's, there's, a, there's question marks on both. So, so there's lots of work for the parties. I think these by-elections will be good to get them done and, and the parties will uh, settle into a summer of, of reaching out to some of these voters and, and shoring, up their, uh, shoring up their constituencies. Otherwise known as the barbecue circuit. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, both <laughs> of you. Really appreciate fairs. it. That's right. Andrew Enns with Leger and Shachi Curl with the Angus Reid Institute.